All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from blue skied sunny morning here in San Diego. And today I'm joined by Mark Stewart, who is on the other side of the world in Singapore. I don't know what the skies are like there today, Mark. The skies are nice and dark now, but it <laughs> was a beautiful, sunny, blue sky day in the same way here. Yeah, great. Singapore, one of my favorite places. And Mark is the managing director and master trainer at the Anagram team. And Mark is a sought after corporate trainer, international keynote speaker, and award winning from the award winning training company Anagram Group. And today we're going to talk about leadership in a crisis. And let's face it, uh, um, Mark, when this interview goes out, and it's probably in a, in a week or two, um, we're still going to be somewhat in the crisis. We don't know where we are in the crisis, whether we're towards the end of it or the middle of it, or who knows mm -hmm. at this stage. Um, but let's just, let's just baseline things for a moment. Um, leadership in a crisis, what are some of the fundamental things that you first need to do when a crisis comes upon you to set yourself up for, for managing your way through it? I find crises quite an interesting thing. If you're a leadership practitioner, such as I am, these periods of time give you great case studies for the next five or 10 years. It's a slightly morbid way of looking at things, but what you realize is some leaders really excel and they're often the ones who you don't necessarily expect to excel. And the ones who are doing a really good job under normal times suddenly start to falter. And mm -hmm. they're really quite basic things, especially when we've not got any president. We haven't got an example of this before. We had maybe SARS and MERS, especially here in, in Asia, but a lot of the leaders today, especially of the upcoming firms and the tech teams, they've never encountered this before. So when you look at the really basics of what you need during a crisis, you need information, that's one. Where's the information coming from? Can it be trusted? What do you need to know? And of course, as a leader, you don't need to do everything yourself. You've got teams around you, that's what leadership is. But in some way, you have to have the information at hand to make this, to make the decisions. The other thing which I'm not seeing enough of personally from leaders is decisiveness. Mm. And what that means is you get some leaders who follow, and that's not the worst strategy in the world to see what other people are doing and follow them. But what makes someone a leader who takes the initiative, who's the yeah. first mover? Which country did lockdowns first? Who decided mm -hmm. to close down offices and businesses? Many countries followed, some led, and some of those ones who led are in better positions now. But what yeah. goes through a leader's mind to say, I've got no evidence this is going to work, there's no history, but I'm gonna make a decision. And the other one is really around agility. How quickly mm -hmm. can we move and react to a situation? Now we know that we're in unprecedented times, half the world seems to be working from home. And we're not really set up to work from home, not <laughs> as, an, as, an, as an economy. And what I find amusing is I spent years doing uh, BCP, business Conti continuity plans. Right. And you, you focus very much on the systems. Mm -hmm. Can this system work from home? Can it work from a different site? We never looked at how how things would, would work. How would we communicate? How would we get the job done? How would we be productive? So again, the firms excelling now are the ones who are agile enough to change their policies and procedures without just waiting around sort of paralyzed by indecision. Yeah, no, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot to unpack there. Just going back to the first point that you raised around yeah. communication because I think that that is a critical that's a critical piece and you can see that in the world today <laughs> on a global mm -hmm. level where you know there's there's a lot of mixed communication there's a lot of misinformation yeah. there's a lot of conflicting yeah. information and at the end of the day nobody seems to really know the truth about anything anymore no one does. but within an organ within an organization mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than when there's lack of communication because then gossip and rumor and innuendo like fill the vacuum so it is very important as you say for the leader to get out ahead of things and over communicate if necessary yes i even believe in communicating even when you don't have have the facts there's nothing yeah. wrong with being authentic or vulnerable and saying 
I don't know if this is the best move. I don't have the facts, but this is what we're doing and why. And I think as long as people understand that, then they will tolerate it. They will understand yeah. it. They don't want to be in the leader's position quite often because yeah. there's very tough decisions to be made at this moment. The worst thing a leader can do is go quiet. Mm -hmm. And they might not mean to go quiet. They're working hard. They're behind the scenes. They're in endless meetings. They've got crisis teams. But some people forget to talk and tell their teams what they're doing. And yes, I'm not able to attend many meetings, but this is what I am doing. So I agree. Mm -hmm. Overcommunication is sometimes the best thing, even if you don't have answers. Yeah, and, and likewise, what you said about decisiveness, because I'm making decisions, uh, because that's what, you know, at the end of the day, when people are, are afraid or they're unsure, they want something to latch on to. So if you say, we're making the decision, we're going to do this right now, regardless of, as you said, regardless of whether it's the correct decision or whether it's a totally like informed decision or whatever, people will rally around it because they want to do something. They want to feel like they're, they're, they're contributing and it takes away some of the angst. Mm. I think as long as there's the right intention, people sure. will, support, will support decisions. We've seen with the COVID crisis that a lot of countries they took a long time to make decisions on what they were going to do, whether they're going to close their borders, whether they were going to close schools. And even in Singapore here, which a lot of people are still looking at as a great example of how to navigate its way through, even in Singapore, there was a period of time where we were going, well, is the government going to close schools? What's happening? Is this safe? And we we're looking for decisions. Yeah. And it came eventually, but there was a week or two where even I was going, well, Singapore's known for the most being overcautious. Yeah. Why are we behind some other countries at this moment? And in hindsight, there were quite good decisions, but there's always that gap and the perception of what your staff are thinking and what they're thinking about you and your leadership team. You've got to make a decision. And if you don't have facts and data, which I always prefer, Sometimes mm -hmm. intuition is, is needed if there's no previous examples or data to, to go from. Yeah, and that's, what the, and that's what people are often looking for, as you said, from, from leaders, is they're looking to say, okay, I understand they don't know everything, but that they're, they're wise uh, uh, people who have good instincts. And I think that's what people look for in the end of the day, is they want to trust that the people have, have good instincts. And obviously... I mean, when people look to Singapore, I think uh, for those of people who've never been to Singapore, you know, it's uh, <laughs> Singapore's pretty small place, so it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot easier it's to do like things in Singapore. It's yeah. a city like, state, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and then you mentioned agility, and I think that is the, that is the key part because I know that uh, having talked to a lot of people over the course of of this uh, crisis, you know, there's a lot of organizations who, who are struggling with the agility piece um, mm -hmm. because let's face it, when business is good, people get comfortable. Uh, yeah. and, and it's always kind of amazed me in many ways is that even the most um, innovative and disruptive and progressive companies that come out, you know, startups that come out, the minute they get to any size, they put in very traditional structures organizational yeah. structures and they put buildings and they put their names on it. And, and it's funny, like those companies, a lot of them who were all, who were agile and disruptive coming up are now actually quite stuck because they built these very rigid structures, high, you know, mm -hmm. traditional structures. And, and I think that's a, it's, it's amazed me how people have struggled with the, with being agile during this period. Yeah, some people just can't break away from the status quo, from mm -hmm. what's got them to where they are now. And therefore, they, they stall. They go into yeah. like the paralysis um, of just overanalyzing everything and thinking, well, what do I do? And when should I, when should I do it? And this is a bit risky. And it is risky. But mm -hmm. we've also got to move fast. And you see it everywhere from the large companies, even down into my industry of speakers and trainers yeah. and some of the, you know, the ones who we used to, who we look up to. And when you see them on stage, they're magnificent, but some are only just getting around now to being set up to be able to do a virtual uh, speech or a training mm -hmm. session. Whereas 
some companies and our one within a week of realizing this is serious, we'd redesigned the, the website, we'd got all the, mm -hmm. equi the, the equipment in, you've got to be able to live up to what your message is in some ways. Yeah. But yeah, firm, yeah. some firms are struggling with getting a position. And the other thing was really, we saw a lot of companies and leaders think they were waiting to see if it'd be over in like a month. Yeah. But even if yeah. lockdowns are relaxed, in three or four weeks time. So in Singapore, we have something called a circuit breaker, which is really a, a lockdown. And it should finish mm -hmm. on June 4th. But there's no way the economy is going back to normal on June 4th. The lockdown just means we can maybe go to a shopping mall or we can right. go and meet friends. Right. This is gonna be impacting us into end of year at the least, uh, into quarter one, quarter two, 2021. So if we've not adjusted and moved and thought about how we're going to work over the next six to nine months, then leaders have some work, work to do. Yeah, and I think that's a great point uh, because uh, to your point, uh, your point about people sort of hoping this would be over quickly. And uh, mm. and but but the reality is, I mean, we're fortunate we've run a virtual organisation by choice for about six or mm. seven years now. So this wasn't the this was you know business as usual for us yeah. and we had made a strategic decision on that but i think i think that it really behooves companies now to look at whether going back to the status quo to the way things were whether that is the ideal thing to do whether or not that this is mm -hmm. not giving you an opportunity to look at things differently i mean i certainly believe that it is a great opportunity to look at uh, why do people, if, if your job allows it, why do people have to live close to their office? Why do they have to commute? Why do they have to live in high cost areas? Why do they have to tether themselves to, to a building when uh, they could have a better quality of life, choose where they live? And once they have the infrastructure at home to do it, they can work effectively and sometimes more effectively. We found that people are more effective uh, in our particular case. But I do take your point that this is a time when instead of just saying, OK, let, let's just hunker down and get through this and then get back to normal. Really good leaders should be saying, well, OK, what can we learn about this for the future? Maybe this is a great time to look at some some changes. Yeah, that's that's very much the case. This is the best opportunity firms have had yeah. in almost decades to make a, so almost a sweeping change into how organizational structures are and the working environment. I still think many firms are going to go back to the standard way of working because it's comfortable and mm -hmm. they'll come up with many reasons and excuses why. And I understand some of them. Some of them, I think we still need the office environment or I can, I can try to have my business however I want, but if clients still want to meet me in person, then I need to be able to react to that mm -hmm. in some ways. What I hope this brings for many firms is leaders sit down and really think about what is the future. They've got a great opportunity to lower their real estate costs. They've got opportunities to have a wider, diverse, you know, employee population. Yeah. You don't have to be restricted, in your case, maybe to who's in San, in San Diego. You yeah, can get the absolutely. best people from around the world or from around the country. And you can make cost savings there. You can get diversity there. You can get different strengths. The opportunities are huge. I mm -hmm. think we're going to go in probably a hybrid model. Yeah. And we're going to do more stuff online. People are now more comfortable. We've got the systems. Most of us are set up at home. I think there's still going to be a desire for an office environment for many firms. I think that's fine. There's a midpoint. There's an equilibrium somewhere there that I think we're going to settle into that allows people more flexibility. And maybe we work from home two or three days a week, understanding we have to come in on a couple of days, and that's fine. But mm -hmm. we've got better than where we were beforehand. So yeah, and it's I, a great and, opportunity. And I, yeah, it it is a great it is a great opportunity, and I think, and not just not just with with how people work, but one of the things that we've certainly been talking a lot about is just overall with your digital processes and companies who who went into this crisis not really having good digital processes in place like not having their you know crm properly set up and managed and their other um, digital processes again 
when times are good, you can overlook a lot of efficiencies. Well, a lot of those things have come home to roost now. And, uh, and I think some, a lot of companies have struggled during the initial parts of this because they didn't have good digital processes in place. And I think that's another great uh, opportunity for people to really build a much more efficient company for the future, knowing what the alternative is. Yes, I think this is one of the greatest opportunities. Again, we'll see some leaders really excel in this and think past can we access systems. It's not about accessing yeah. Yeah. systems in these, in these environments. Yeah. It's about how do we work? How do we mm -hmm. communicate? How do we engage? How do we work as a team? How often do we meet up? What method do, do we use? And a lot of the new technology and tools there's so much out there. There's almost too much out there at this, this moment. But the applications that really add value and allow firms to create efficiency and add value to their clients, that can you know, reap its rewards in many ways in giving you not just a more streamlined operation, but better servicing for your clients as well, which is ultimately what most firms are looking for. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what's one last piece of advice you would give to leaders out there how to and maybe, okay, maybe some leaders have struggled a bit, maybe they felt lost a bit. What is what is something that they could do right now to maybe um, right the ship a little bit? I think if people feel they're behind the curve or they're struggling a little bit, there's a there's a couple of, of options. One you can look around you. You can look at what other people are doing. You can speak to industry peers. Mm -hmm. Most leaders are part of a network across their industry or some association. Pull in those contacts or your mentors or someone and see what's going on. The other one is to look in internally. Look within your team. Who are your strong, dep strong deputies? Get them involved. There's a lot of leaders who still think they have to do everything themselves. And therefore, they feel the whole weight of pressure onto them. Whereas re really, most people have competent teams. You hire people for a reason to be, to be competent. So we don't have to go through it by ourselves. We engage a team. We, we can set up a small committee, work through it, delegate some responsibilities down. A lot of it is going back to the basics. It's don't do all, all the work yourself. Use other people. Use your network and ultimately start making decisions. <laughs> you know, yes. you've got to get the ball rolling in some ways. If not, you're always going to be looking for the perfect opportunity, but the perfect opportunity just isn't there at this moment. So at some point you've got to bite the bullet and try something different. Always be listening to what your team and your clients are telling you. Talk to your clients. What are their needs in, this, in these times? How can you meet it? And that way yeah. you're getting all the information in. Once you get the information in, it becomes easier to make decisions because you're using it based on feedback and not just a gut feel. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point is start making decisions. But yeah, look around you. If, you, if, you've, if you've felt a little paralyzed or whatever, look around, see what other people are doing, get some advice, but then start leading because I think that's what people need right now. Yeah, and over-communicate if needed. And, Exactly. Listen, Mark, this has been great. Uh, Mark Stewart in Singapore. All of Mark's information will be in his contributor bio attached to this video. But before we go, Mark, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do in your organization. Well, Anagram Group is a corporate training company. I'm also a professional speaker at some conferences. So we work mainly looking at what we call leadership in the digital age, which is modern leadership and the future of leadership and the future of work. The other one is looking at innovation, primarily using design thinking and other tools to help generate better ideas and creativity across firms. We're based in Singapore, but we operate across most countries in Asia. Excellent. Well, uh, this has been great, Mark. Uh, glad to hear things are hopefully getting... Uh, getting a little bit more uh, towards normal in, in Singapore. Mm -hmm. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline and CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.